Namaste. Hi. The right hemisphere of the brain emits a low vibrational frequency similar to the humming bee. Mm. On the other hand, the left side produces a slightly high vibrational tone. Mm -hmm. Like the crickets uh, um, buzzing from afar. All right. Therefore, uh, sound concentration is an important part of the Hatha Yoga practice. And there are actually external tools yeah, we can utilize to increase our awareness of these subtle vibrational inner uh, frequencies or sounds. And one of them is the utilization of, for example, the Tingsha bells. And then Tingsha bells produces generally a high frequency. And uh, Tingsha bells, therefore, uh, mimics the sound vibration we realize or experience yeah, predominating the um, left hemisphere of the brain because the left hemisphere being the uh, regulator, it influences the right side of the body. So it gives us the ability yeah, to a function in the physical sense, yeah, which includes uh, lower or I mean, bodily functions, yeah, muscular function, mobility, and those things. Yeah. On the other hand, yeah, bowls. So they emit that low vibrational frequency. And that, um, in effect, yeah, reinforces the vibration of the right hemisphere. Therefore, meditating upon the, the bowls, yeah, it gives us a sense of calmness, yeah, quietness. So right away, it has this instantaneous effect to the brain. On the other hand, yeah, when you try and focus on the sound emission coming from the tincture, it alerts the brain right away. Yeah. So these tools are external. Yeah, I say um, adjunctive uh, support we can yeah, utilize, but you don't need this actually. You don't need this. Hatha yoga is tool free. Okay, now um, in the practice of Hatha yoga, this inner sound will manifest yeah, through time. And then what are the steps? That's why I love Hatha yoga, it's very systematic first. Yeah, the body is where this subtle vibration comes from. Therefore, you need to make your body open, light, and strong. That's just the truth. Yeah, there's no shortcut, so to speak. Before we can explore the brain, yeah, we need to awaken yeah, the physical body first. All right. Next, purify uh, your energetic channels. When you purify the energetic channels, the um, most helpful and more potent of all the techniques is pranayama. Yeah, and for me, I practice the Nadi Shodhana. Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes I do Bastika Pranayama. Pranayama, yeah, powerfully irrigates the Nadis, yeah, the inner pathways within, because these inner pathways become a um, connection, yeah, to the brain centers. Nadis are where uh, the the energy flow through. If the Nadis are blocked. Therefore, you know, we can't e we, we, we won't be able to explore the inner brain. And third, yeah, practice mudras or bandhas. Mudras and bandhas are um, techniques to you know, lift and then to channelize and direct the energy we harness and pr produce from the lower observances of asana and pranayama to the brain. All right, and then there are various bandhas in or bandhas and mudras in hatha yoga, and the most powerful is actually the Kachari mudra. 
where we allow the tongue to enter the back of the uvula because through that, the tongue has a direct connection to those inner compartments. It paves the way for the rising of the energy. But there are other mudras as well accessible for most of us. For example, the Shambhavi mudra by internally or externally looking between the eyebrows. You also have the Viparita Karani mudra uh, slash asana. It's an inversion and uh, other mudras and bandhas as well. The three bandhas can be utilized as well, but I, I practiced the three bandhas, but during my preparation to meditation, they're just too strong. So for me, I practice only the Kachari Mudra while breathing the Ujjayi and of course the Shambhavi Mudra. And then last, listening to sounds. Yes, my, I attained my first Samadhi by listening and concentrating on the Nada, but I didn't have those tools before. Yeah, I didn't even know about the nada at all. I was just relaxing, and then I, I, that sound was already manifesting, but I didn't pay attention. But on that particular instance, I did. I, I'm not even sure why did I you know, do it. I just focused on that, and then it happened. Yes, and then from there I grow. My, my, my practice. They are listening to the nada is really powerful, and then information just appear like yes listening to the nada can absorb the brain and i could fully attest to that now how can we awaken this nada spontaneously or progressively uh, and safely uh, by following you know, those lower observances i mentioned all right those are the on the mat observances now off the mat we need to regulate the uh, consumption yeah, of our bodily energy. And then what are these practices? Moderation of our diet, of course, because if you know, there's no use of practicing asana pranayama if we always subject ourselves with um, unhealthy food, you know, processed food. Yeah, I'm not proposing a particular diet, but consumption of light easier to digest food is uh, recommended, especially in the first two years of the practice. Yeah. Next. Yeah, stop smoking. Yeah, stop consumption of alcohol because they can really hurt you. Yeah, they could uh, sabotage and damage your body. And then third, moderation of uh, common pleasures. Yeah, when I say common pleasures, it goes beyond the sexual function, but the sexual energy is the most potent, actually. It's the energy that is close to the purity of the prana itself. So moderation of our sexual activity, especially in the first two years of your practice while you're developing it. Yeah, because the sexual energy, if you control it, yeah, it transmutes into nada. Yes, yes, um, it's very true. Yeah. And it also yeah, allows the brain yeah, to become less distracted because there's a science to it which we call feedback inhibition. Yeah, when we control the release of our sexual energy, we also regulate the production of the uh, pituitary, you know, the pituitary gland yeah, uh, adjust. So the, the level of, of um, the sexual energy, yeah, the testosterone, yeah, and of course, the energy that causes libido will also decrease. And then when we reach that you know, base level, yeah, so the the body attains a state of equilibrium. Yeah, the organic expression of the uh, Vajroli Mudra, you know, the Sahajroli Mudra for, in females. And this will lead to the manifestation of the Nada. Yeah, the, the inner sound shall appear. But I'm not telling you to stop. And then completely um, yeah, cut it because this could also lead to confusion of the brain, yeah, uh, disruption in your bodily function. So moderation is the key. Yeah, moderation is the key. And then, of course, reduction of mental stress. Yeah, stress can really hamper the, the progress of your spiritual growth. Yeah, I know in this modern times, yeah, when we're working and yoga is just... Yeah, a way to, well, well, you're lucky if you have an hour a day to practice yoga because in this modern times, work, 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 work. So reduction of mental stress means uh, allotting time for your um, hobby. 
Yes, for example, me. Um, I, I love uh, taking pictures. I love appreciating nature. Yeah. I love reading yeah, and watch my favorite um, television show, yeah, so to speak. Yes, so those things. Yeah, having a good yeah, coffee in the morning, just be and enjoy your me time. Yeah, those things. And of course, of course, the the workload should also be uh, considered. Yeah. So in here, yeah, time management is important. Yeah, allowing time for yourself practice, but not compromising the other ones for your um, yeah, function and your yeah to to accomplish your modern tasks. Yes, if you have like for example an hour or thirty minutes to browse on your social media, stop it. Okay, so instead a lot that time uh, for your reading exercise. You might you might argue, yes, yeah, social media makes me relax now. <laughs> It actually relaxes, it actually feeds the brain of the um, the pleasure. Because, yes, yeah, social media is good because it, it, enters, it entertains you, yeah, but in a way that you become addicted to it. Yes, so because that's, that's, that's the brain, yeah, when it finds the pleasure in doing things, it will you know, seek for more. Yeah, so find things that uh, relaxes you in a more organic way. Nature, sport, uh, painting, taking pictures, yeah, having a good chat with your family, your friends. Those are really heartwarming and yeah, spiritual in nature because those are energetic ones. Social media is not. <laughs> Social media can just make your brain yeah become more introverted. So the heart of the discussion is there's hatha yoga. Although a bulk of it happens on the mat, yeah, an important a chunk of it also yeah, should be accomplished yeah, when we're not doing those techniques at all, which is living a healthy life. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. And yeah, have a beautiful day. Namaste. Bye-bye.